Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the second afternoon session for today. Um, our first talk in this session is going to be uh, by uh, Joao Dorigello, and he's going to be talking about constant depth circuits for Boolean functions. Cool, thank you for the presentation, introduction. Yeah, my name is Joao uh, Dorigello. Today I'm going to be talking about constant depth circuits, uh, for mainly for the memory. This is joint work with uh, Jonathan Alcock, thinking about uh, Alessandro Longo and Miklos Santa. So let's straight, jump straight into the, to the action. So what is a QRAM? So from a very theoretical perspective, a QRAM of size N is basically Oracle that does this mapping. So it has an, a register, an address register I, a target register B, and a quantum memory, a memory register uh, X, which can be, in this case, uh, quantum, or it could be classical, and then if it's classical, it won't be writing in the CAD notation. But what it does is that it access the XI uh, entry, or the, the ith entry of the memory, which is XI, and adds to the target register. So you can see it as a, like a, a quantum equivalent of a read-only memory. Uh, we also have another uh, type of gate called quantum random access gate, which is the semi-sifilin, but instead of reading only, it swaps a, a target register with a, a certain position of a memory in subposition. Uh, you can see this can be seen as equivalent of like a, a read and write uh, 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 gate. And QRAM and QRAG can uh, they have allows us to ac access classical memory subposition. And why do you care about this? Is because they're very useful and used in many uh, important algorithms. So for example, I guess everyone knows Grover search, you repeat your Grover's Oracle many times. I don't know if you can share. I know there's no, uh, I don't think there's a, ah, there's a point. Okay. So, okay, there's a, okay, not in the best place. <laughs> so you have your Grover uh, Oracle and you do many times, but inside your Grover Oracle, you have to do this phase Oracle. And for normally to do this kind of Oracle, if you uh, rely on this on a, uh, you're searching in an unstructured uh, list size, you have to load your memory first, and then later you can do this, uh, this uh, phase oracle. You can also use in Schwarz algorithm using window arithmetic for looks up addition. So for example, uh, this lookup uh, part, you rely on a Cura. And many other applications, HHL type of algorithms, quantum machine learning basically is like fundamental. <laughs> and cryptography, collision finding, quantum random box and graphs. So basically any uh, algorithm that requires manipulating external classical data, instructor data, in which you have to load the, cl the classical data into your computer, you're gonna rely on QRAM. And uh, there are many types of QRAM circuits. So for example, uh, one I'm showing here is a multiplexer in which you try all the combinations sequentially, uh, all the unit areas you need, until you load uh, all your possible, uh, all your, uh, your quantum data into uh, your target. This one was classic, very simple, but it's a linear depth, so it's not something we would like to. Another simple one is a fan architecture in which is a, is a tree-like, tree-wise uh, shaped circuit in which your, each qubit is gonna, each qubit of the address register is gonna control uh, that the path that your target qubit will take in all the in all the layers, as, a, as I put it here, this is much better. Has a low log depth, but it has a it was shown that it has a low noise resilience. And there's a more sophisticated one, there's a bucket brigade, in which instead of having your address qubits control all your qubits from the target for a certain level of your tree, you can actually send out your qubit you address qubit down the tree to create a path and such that your, your target qubit would, uh, uh, would interact with one address qubit per level. It has much higher noise resilience uh, as was shown by some papers recently. Okay, but the problem is that there's many difficulties of QRAM. So, so far, there's no experimental implementations and I don't think there's any uh, on the horizon. QRAM is costly, contrary to most RAM architectures. Uh, it might require error correction, which make it even heavier. And uh, 
And as many critics pointed out by this, for example, this recent paper by Jackson and Ratio, in which they, they try to argue that if you require error correction, you're going to lose all your advantage and is a point of um, a argument of loss of opportunity in, in which you could probably tra uh, trade your low quantum advantage with uh, parallel class computations. So this is just to say that yeah, QRAM is very vital, it's very important for many algorithms, but uh, it faces a lot, a lot of hurdles. And when you say, when you tell most people, especially quantum artists, say, I have a came up with a quantum algorithm, but realize on QRAM, everyone, everyone was gonna look down and you're like, ah, yeah, whatever, it's not gonna go anywhere. So we came with this, we, we arrived at this project and we're looking at all these uh, difficulties and uh, seeing how QRAM was important. And we tried to, we decided to look at that. So I'm going to disappoint you if I say that we didn't solve this problem. We're not going to, we didn't come with any new uh, model of QRAM that, uh, that surpasses uh, all obstacles. But we came from a more uh, theoretical perspective, especially coming from like uh, QAC0, uh, constant depth circuits. And we, we, tried, we decided to see what we could do with QRAM. So what we do, what we did in this project, we, we employed like special multi qubit gates that I'm going to talk about soon uh, to propose actually constant depth circuits for uh, QRAM and more general circuits like these uniformly controlled uh, uh, gates in which you apply a, a unitary, a single qubit unitary to a target uh, state, uh, control on uh, your target, your address register and Boolean function. Okay, so um, what are these multi-qubit gates that we employed? These are very fundamental and have appeared before, like fan out gate, which is basically a sequence of C nodes share a single control qubit. It's basically a copying. You can copy many uh, single qubit into many other qubits uh, as a cost of one C naught. So that's one, that's fan out, is a, will be a classical equivalent of a just copying classical data, which is cheap classically, but not so much quantum. And the other one is called this global tunnel gate. It's basically a sequence of control uh, Z gate with uh, some, uh, some phase. So instead of having many CZ gates uh, separately, you can do this gate. You can combine all of them, all these committing gates into a single gate we call GT or tunnel, global tunnel gate. So these are gates we're gonna uh, be assuming that we can perform with like constant uh, cost. And why they? Uh, first, because they tied very nicely to nice complex classes that all people are going to be talking about in the next uh, uh, talks, which are QAC, QNC0, F, QAC0, F. And um, many of the previous works have explored the power of fan out and in constructing basic Boolean functions like OR and threshold. Uh, there are physical proposals for this kind of gates in our traps, and there have been experiments carrying out uh, you, uh, implementing these gates in real life. So they're not out of this world. Uh, it's another question if they're gonna be uh, 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 good in practice and when it comes to one computer, but they can be realizable. And to be honest, they're simple enough. I mean, they, they, they're, they're the simplest uh, qubits, uh, multiple qubit gates I can think of. Just copying and CZ gates. Okay, so our tools that we're gonna be using or we use in a paper is a very simple tools. So first is that a any single qubit uh, gate can be decomposed as this uh, sequence of uh, phases in, uh, sandwiched by uh, Hadamard's. Another one is the equivalence between a fan out and a parity gate. Parity gate being a gate that computes the parity of a certain uh, subset of qubits and outputs it, uh, the result into a target uh, qubit. Other uh, tools is these non constructions for the end gate that was uh, done by uh, Hoya and Taishu, Tani and Sergei and others. Uh, you basically can go do uh, N gate in constant depth using basically linear lin N log N number of sealers and N final gates or only four digit gates. And uh, the final result that we use is that any pair of, if you have a, a bunch of commuting, pairwise commuting fan out gates, you can basically compress or think them as just one, being just one GT gate. Okay, so what we build, we build this, uh, this F, this uniformly controlled gate, we which are basically 
this uh, single qubit gates control on a uh, you know, target uh, address, yeah, sorry, address qubit being a certain value. So they have this form, uh, very simple, actually the matrix one. As a subcase of this kind of gates, we have the Boolean gates, which you think of your your you you your UX gate here uh, being the Pauli gate, uh, the Pauli X gate, and you end up with the Boolean uh, function. So Boolean function is Boolean this what we call this F fanning, so fanning gate. Uh, you basically compute a, a value of a, a Boolean value of your your address, and you put in a target, and this includes many. Uh, many Boolean functions like n, or majority, threshold, exactly, mod, parity. And finally, uh, QRAM and QRAG, as I told you before. And we stress that QRAM actually is a, it can be seen as a Boolean function. So QRAM is actually a subcase of f penning case, and f, f penning gate. Uh, yeah, which is this, basically this uh, uh, Boolean function of this form. So if you want to see in the picture how these all these gates, uh, these classes, they interrelate, we I put it here. I, there are some class, there are some classes here. Uh, this uh, quantum memory devices and F QRAM, which uh, we device in, we define in our paper, but I'm not going to talk about it. But as you can see, an F as, uh, F UCG is a very broad class that in, uh, encompasses FNN and also QRAM, but not all gates. For for example. Uh, Kirag is not part of F. Yeah, this is easy. Okay, so this is first construction. We propose two kind of constructions for these gates. The first construction is very simple: is convert the input, your target input, into its one hot encoding. So what is the one hot encoding of a certain string? So take a string x. Your its one hot encoding is like an exponentially large string in it, in which you're gonna put place one. At the entry, at the the, at the entry in which uh, this coordinate uh, equals the origin of string x up to some uh, uh, ordering, and the rest of the, the string is all zero. So it's basically like a one uh, a massive string of Hamming distance uh, Hamming weight one. And using this construction, uh, we propose the how we have this kind of resources. So for example, you can construct any FUCG by using these many fanouts and ancillas, or only nine GT gates and these many ancillas. And same with fanin, similar number of resources and uh, slightly less GT gates until QRAM composite, basically like a QRAM in like almost linear number of fanouts and ancilla, or uh, only six GT gates. Uh, the results for FUCG and FNIN are Worst case complexities, if you assume extra properties on your app, this resource can be improved. So here I'm gonna uh, like display the circuit that we have for QRAM. So it's a very simple circuit. Uh, so this circuit does QRAM. So what we have, you have as your address qubit, your memory qubit, qubit. And, and what you do, you start by what almost all the circuits on like, QAC0 class does do like you first copy your 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 data in time. So you're gonna copy the address so that we can subsequently just do stuff in parallel. So after the copying, we do the one hot computation. One hot co computation can is can be done very simply by taking all the n combinations of your input and output and uh, putting another target. So that's what we do. We do all the combinations, uh, all the like. If your string is all zeros, we're gonna put a one here. If not, if they're like one and zero zero, we're gonna put here until like you to try the combinations. If it's they're all one, you're gonna put here. So at the end of the day, in your auxiliary register here, you're gonna have at most one qubit being this in the state one per branch of the weight function. And after that, you what you have to do is just copy all these results into a target. So you could do this work many synods, or more simply, well, so simply, a parity gate, which this is a parity gate, like a, a basic fan out conjugated by Hadamard. So you just put all your one, your at most one entry into the target, and later you will compute, and basically voila, you have your B plus X Y uh, at the target. How many GT gates, for example? So you have one plus two, so three. Uh, another one here, four. 
plus two, six, seven. That's how we got seven. Very easy. And this was the first set, first construction. The second construction is more elaborated, and uh, I like the most. I think it's nicer. You explore this Boolean analysis connection between constant depth circuits and fan outs made by some authors uh, almost like a decade ago. And we rely on three times of Fourier decompositions. So here we like have basically like three subcases, and that's why we have like this table with like many different uh, uh, quantities, like different uh, uh, expansions on a Boolean function. I'm gonna make it more precise in the next slide. But you can see like you realize each construction has its merits and pros and cons, and it's gonna depend highly on the function you're gonna decompose. And it's gonna be very dependent on the Fourier uh, uh, spectrums and properties of your function. So that's why you have like the support and some of the support, but okay. And uh, the GT functions, they decrease the, the, a bit. Okay, but don't, don't get caught into all the these nasty uh, uh, expressions. Uh, the, the idea of, uh, of, 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 of the composition is to expand your function in some nice spaces. So for example, we can use the first very basic representation, which is the Fourier expansion of the reals. You expand a function in a, in a parity basis, and you have this, or you can approximate mainly, mainly your, the, your Fourier expansion that you have is not sparse. So maybe you can approximate to even another, another function which has a sparse Fourier transform. Or you can think of actually let's not expand it over the, the of the parity uh, basis, but actually let's expand on the end basis. So these are the third representations. So why we care about this kind of uh, expressions, these expansions, is because they expand a function or your your original function into functions that we we can calculate easily. So parity is easy. Parity is basically basically one synod. And N is basically, as we saw, it can be constructed by like a linear number C naught. So these things are easy to do. Um, so the idea is that you reconstruct all your function on phases. So this relies on the like being on the this very simple and quality that the product of your of a Z uh, or Z gates of Z with phases is basically the Z of the sum of the phases. And these if you're using the, the Fourier decomposition, turns out to be the original function. So you can reconstruct the original function on a phase of a, of a, of a, of a, uh, of, of, your, of your gate. If you if you uh, control the phase that we know, you know this for each function you're doing. You just don't know the function of the parity for your input. So if you calculate these, you can only con you can control and reconstruct the, the phase. So more precisely for how you do this, this reconstruction, suppose you calculate all the parities using uh, fan, uh, fan out, then you can create this, this, this cat state. And from this cat state, you can apply a control phase uh, in parallel without the other qubit onto different qubit. So basically you apply, you apply like a control on each qubit uh, onto the state and you create this. And this is basically this. So you, you using, you leveraging this cat state just to construct this in parallel. That's a trick. Because you, you, you could have like do it like in linear depth or log depth, but you can do this parallel using this cat state. The problem is that this cat state is hard to construct for a normal circuit, but for using fan outs or CD gate, this is easy. And then you compute the cat state and voila. And you can do the same thing. You can see QRAM as a, as a Boolean function. So you can do free analysis. You can calculate all the Fourier coefficients and apply the same technique. And what you get, you get that you can do uh, with this construction, you can do QRAM with this many oscillos, slightly worse than using the first construction, like N square, basically, and oscillo of fan out. Or, but using fan, fan out, uh, GT gates, you can only do, you can do, you can perform there with only two GT gates. That's very efficient, in my opinion. Uh, with uh, more oscilla. But the normal oscilla can be decreased if you use some, uh, some recursion trick, can be exponential with this, uh, at the cost of using more uh, GT gates. Uh, forgot the word GT gate here. Yeah, and I think I'll get into the end. I don't know if I rest or not. Oh, perfect. So in this talk, I show, we, can make, we propose two types of constructions uh, for constant depths. Uh, constant depth circuits for uniformly controlled gates, which 
as a subcase involve uh, encompasses Boolean functions, and a subcase involve uh, QRAM, uh, not QRAC, but QRAC can be done uh, using the first encoding. And this was done yeah, as a one hundred encoding and free analysis with three expansions. And even though this doesn't tr truly unbounded gates won't be uh, uh, available or be a reality uh, experimentally, in a in the, maybe you you don't you cannot maybe you don't you cannot do fan out on like 10 billion gates, but it maybe you can do like in 10 or 100. So this maybe can like not make your circuits constant that in practice, but can be shortened a lot just by replacing like log factors, log two factors to a larger basis. If K is your, is your, this, the length or the size of your fan out. And that's it. Uh, I thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks for the nice talk. Any questions? I thought everyone had understood the whole talk. Hello. Oh, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, yeah, so my question is, at the beginning, you talked about the different QRAM implementations and how some of them uh, had this noise resilience. Uh, so like the bucket brigade versus the fan out. Mm -hmm. Since your circuits seem to have a lot of fan out gates, is it accurate to say that it probably won't have these noise resilience properties? Yep, probably. Maybe not, probably not. Uh, I, I'm not too familiar with the analysis. I know that the, the high noise resilience of the bucket brigade is that there's not much entanglement going on between the qubits in each branch of the wave function. Uh, so each, each address interacts with very few. Uh, um, the tag interacts with very few qubits. So that's why. In our case, um, it's not clear. Um, I'm not sure. I, 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 you can try. You can. You can. I'll, I'm. I'm inclined to say no. It won't be as good, even though you can say like maybe okay, it's constant depth. The you won't have enough time to propagate all the errors if you quick enough. But I'm not gonna put my hand on on fire and say like no, no. It, it, why is everything? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I'll ask a basic question maybe. So your construction using the, uh, sorry, the one really honey. large encoding, which whose one, name one, I forgot, yes. yeah. that, that needs two to the N ancilla? Isn't that bad? Well, it depends, but yeah, but, but it depends, depends where you apply to. Uh, the QRAM you're doing that for the address qubit is log n, so that's why you have n idea. But yeah, in the worst case for FUCG, yeah, it's gonna be two to the n. But that's that's expected. Like that's this was in, even like for we didn't expect that to to decrease the number of ceiling. I mean, what happens in these constant depth circuits in QRC zero, you're always gonna increase your number of ceiling mostly. And even for like log depth circuit, the number of ceiling is in the worst case is like two to the n. So, but then the other construction doesn't have this, right? Isn't it strictly better then? No, no. The other constructions for in the worst case is two to the n, because the the the, the support of your Boolean function can be two to the n, could be the whole thing, right? It's slightly better. I mean, here is like n to the n, in the other is like two to the n. It's like it's like it's slightly better by a factor of n, with your exponential in the worst case. Thanks. If there are no other questions, we can thank the speaker again.